Welcome to the Dr. Janine Show. I'm Dr. Janine Bowery, naturopathic doctor, and today I'll be talking about the health effects of deuterium and the benefits of drinking deuterium depleted water. I'm so excited to welcome a very special guest today. Victor Sagalovsky is joining me for the show, and he is an expert in the science of deuterium and deuterium depleted water. He's an expert in aging as it relates to his theory called endogenous radiation damage theory of aging. He studied at Loyola University and the University of Hawaii, receiving a multidisciplinary education. He's also the author of the book, Gold, Catalyst of Radiant Health. Well, I am so excited to speak to Victor. So hello, Victor, welcome to the show. I'm so glad that you could join us today. Hi, Dr. Janine, how are you? I'm wonderful, thank you. So let's get right to it. I've got a ton of questions for you. I am so excited about this topic. So can you tell us a little bit about what is deuterium depleted water? Deuterium depleted water is simply water that has a lower amount of deuterium in it. So for that, we need to understand what deuterium is. Deuterium is a version of hydrogen. As we know, hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe, the first element it created, and it's also the main constituent of water, right, H2O. But not all water is H2O. Some water actually uh, has, well, most water has a lot of things in it besides H2O, but one of those things is uh, deuterium. So deuterium is a version of hydrogen that has a neutron, whereas regular hydrogen does not have a neutron. So um, this makes it twice the weight, and herein lies the problem. So when the deuterium form um, combines with water, you get instead of H2O, you get HDO, or the more rare D2O, which is known as heavy water. So over this H2, HDO, there's about, in a liter, there's about six drops. Doesn't seem like very much, but it actually is. And this is the problem. So there's a new standard of water purification, and that is to reduce the amount of deuterium that exists in water. And why do we do this? Is because all the studies point that when you reduce deuterium, uh, biological, it, it, it helps biological processing quite, quite profoundly. So, yeah, and more specifically, if we can get into a little bit about mitochondrial health. So we know yeah. that in terms of having that negative impact, the deuterium, the heavy water, will shut down part of the processes in the mitochondria, the ATP synthase nanomotor. Can right. you talk a little bit about right. that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you're informed on that. Yeah, that's great. Because you know, when these studies, when the studies first started coming out in, in Russia in, uh, in the late '50s, the first one actually published in '61, uh, they were showing that how people were in, in these very harsh areas inside of Siberia, uh, very difficult areas to live in, were experiencing four times more uh, centenarians and longevity markers were much higher than anywhere else in the Soviet republics at the time, and they were trying to figure out why, and then they figured out it was because it was deuterium because these people were drinking water that locally was 60% lower than the average. Okay? But it wasn't, and that was in the 60s that they published this, and then they, and then they um, all the way up until they actually published in the United States in English in 66. And in the 70s, they figured, well, deuterium is twice the size of regular hydrogen, so it will distort DNA and enzymes because it's heavier, right? So if it, so if it fits where something is looking for a hydrogen and you get something heavier, it's just, it, distorts, it distorts the shape, and then you have uh, mutagenesis, proper replication, and so forth and so on. But it, and that was discovered in the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, but not many people took notice of that because nobody was making deuterium depleted water. But it wasn't until 2007 that a professor by the name of Abdullah Olgun in Turkey discovered how this uh, deuterium affects, as you say, the ATP synthase nanomotor, which is the electron transport chain of the mitochondria. And this motor, this nanomotor is very important. Because this is what creates all the ATP, which is the energy currency of our biology in our bodies and any, you know, any eukaryotic cell. So this mitochondria is, these mitochondrial factories have, have millions, billions, trillions of these, of these nanomotors, right? You can't, you can barely count them because they're just, they're, they're, they're nanoscopic. But what's unique about them is not only do they produce our own energy, but they do it so it looks just like a regular motor generator, like we would create, you know, on an automobile or something, except it spins at 9,000 RPM and it has 100% perfect translation. So it's nothing that we can create, but it's, it can't be man-made, but it's in, but it's in, but it's in. So 
these motors, uh, they generate ATP. And what they and how they generate ATP is very simple. They're like they funnel protons coming in that spin the motor. And the protons come in, they spin it. But every 15 seconds, in in our time in our in our in our time right now, uh, you know, where where we are when the deuterium is on the planet. Um, especially where we live, about every 15 seconds, instead of a proton coming into this nanomotor, you get a deuteron, which is a, which is a proton neutron pair. So it's twice the size. It's like fitting a square peg in a round hole. It doesn't fit. So it causes the motor to stutter. It jams. It, it, uh, no ATP is produced in that moment. And, and more importantly, it's cumulative. Over time, this breaks down the, there's a really, there's a, there's a if you don't have membrane permeability, Okay, and all the membranes that you know, you have all these membranes all the way down to the electron transport chain. And these are these membranes have to be permeable, and so uh, and yet they have to they have to be a barrier as well. So when you inside the inside the electron transport chain inside the matrix, you have one type of water on the inside and another type of water on the outside, and in this you have a you have a gradient of protons, and this is what makes those protons want to get over here because there's a difference, right? So this gradient it's like a tide that wants to rush into here. So this water that's inside uh, the mitochondria is 60 to 70 percent deuterium depleted. So everything in nature is trying to keep uh, deuterium out of the mitochondria. Why? Because of this fundamental energy making problem that, that every time a deuterium hits your nanomotor, it damages. Eventually, that membrane has leak, uh, starts to leak. When it starts to leak, then, then that starts that starts the senescence cycle of the cell, you know, leading into apoptosis. And so, when you're young, you have a thousand a thousand mitochondria, or sorry, a hundred thousand mitochondria inside of like a muscle cell. And maybe when you're old, when you're seventy or eighty, or you could be old at any age, honestly, and young at any age. But when you're old, you maybe have a thousand five hundred of so the same type of mitochondria in that cell where you would have had in your in your youth. So it's really just a game of mitochondria because mitochondria produces the energy in our body. The more mitochondria, the better it runs, the more ATP we produce, which means the more oxygen we use, the more oxygen we use, the healthier we are. And the more water that we're actually manifesting in our own body, that we're actually making our own water. So are yeah, you saying, we, yeah. <laughs> Are you saying then that that decreases, that function for our ability through our mitochondrial health decreases as we're aging that is the aging process i mean if you were to simplify that is yeah. you know that that is that is the upstream truth right there that that i believe right you have you look at you look at the things you look at the fundamental causes of aging and upstream to the source of where all this is happening and in the on the mit in the mitochondria you could you could say it's deuterium all we need to do is we have a mechanism for managing deuterium and uh, this is what the essentially the Krebs cycle is. You know, it's a very complex. I was wondering why this Krebs cycle, or St. George cycle, or TCA cycle, whatever you want to call it, in biochemistry, why it's so complex. This is this is how this is how food and everything breaks down to give us the proteins that we need to go into the electron transport chain, to spin that motor, to produce the ATP, to create the proton motor force to do it all over again. So why is it so complex? Because it's managing deuterium. It's exchanging. This is what I learned from Dr. Laszlo Boros at UCLA, it, 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 that it's really what it's doing is it's exchanging deuterium out to try to keep as much deuterium out of the electron transfer chain as possible. And sure enough, when we make when we make water within the within our matrix, all that, like I said, all that uh, metabolic water is deuterium depleted. So, so everything in nature is trying to keep this stuff out. So we have a mechanism for doing so as well. It's just. Over the last 100,000 years, the, the deuterium levels, and even you could even say over the last millions of years, the deuterium levels on this planet are slowly creeping up. So, uh, and you, and we, and all these studies show that when you reduce it, 16%, let's call it 20%, okay, because we don't have, we haven't been born into this type of uh, drinking this type of water, and it's cumulative. So, just reduce your deuterium by 20%. The biological benefit is profound, and it can be quantified because it's a physical problem. It can be quantified as proton motive force. A new word for everybody, it's very easy to remember. And that's, and that, that, and when, and when you look at that, it becomes very profound because you're giving yourself a net energy benefit. You didn't get it, you didn't get before. And the only way, and yeah. the only way you're doing it is not by putting something in your body, it's by taking something out.
So interesting. So when centenarians, this is something that I've studied actually going to uh, Central America and in terms of, is it true that the Nat, it's speaking in nature now, that deuterium depleted water when it's naturally occurring is more inland and higher up from the mountains when it is in nature? It has to do with the hydrological cycle. So because prior, because most of the water on this planet is ocean water, you know, what, I don't know, right. 75% or more of our planet is, is ocean. That water is 155.76. So whenever you get away from the hydrological cycle of the ocean and you get and you get into um, colder latitudes where the hydrological cycle is more amplified, more intense because there's a, because there's a freezing, there's a, it goes, there's a, the water vapor goes directly to freezing. So, so, there, so in places where you have this kind of glacial environment, yes, and you uh, and you're away from the and you're away from the ocean's hydrological cycle, there you will find um, the lowest deuterium on the planet. For example, in the U.S., I always tell everybody Boulder, Colorado. Because there, the tap water is 139. Oh, of, is it? Uh, wow. Yeah. And if you live in New York, Miami, um, Texas, L.A., San Francisco, it'll be 150. You know, and, and so so some place, but some places in the U.S. where you have mountain areas, glacial areas, and why is Colorado like that? Because it's on the because that particular part of the Rockies is on the eastern slope. So it's got its own little hydrology. So anywhere you find its own your own hydrological cycle, then then you have slightly lower deuterium. This is where you find people that have more 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 life energy. You know, I don't people sometimes equate energy with like coffee energy or or or, or like this kind of um, you know this kind of endorphin um, induced energy. But this is a different. This is a deeper. This is a deeper type of energy. This is energy that takes care of the biological process that we don't, that are constantly ongoing that we never think. Of subconscious so now to your point is it true that you can actually deplete a small amount of deuterium by freezing water in and whatever freezes first and please elaborate on this <laughs> you know I tried that was my that was my initial you know entry entry point into this whole <laughs> deuterium depletion. <laughs> was it <laughs> I found about I found a, I read an article in 2004 in search of the fountain of youth and it and it was a NASA engineer that was that was distilling some of the science that he had found in Eastern Europe, and that was really interesting. It was on on deuterium. So in there, it's like well because because you have uh, if you have water that has deuterium in it or he, or pure heavy water that has a different that has a different uh, point of melting, and the point of freezing right different phase change for the, the regular H two O. So there's like about there's about a half a degree of difference there. So people thought, okay, well, if you freeze it, the layer that freezes the top first is going to be heavier in deuterium, so you take that out, right? And this is what I tried to do for a long time. But uh, then I read a study and I found out from the actual scientists and engineers um, that make this stuff um, that, that uh, you can maybe get like, you do it like 10, 20 times, you maybe get like one PPM, you know? Oh, that's Just it? A, that's it. Yeah, that's it. No, okay. You won't, get, you, won't get any, you won't get anything. But there is a benefit to drinking... Uh, melting water you know cold melted water there's a benefit okay. because it still holds that crisp it's still holding that crystalline structure of yes. when it was was frozen so that that's that i think that's that's a that's important um important important enough to mention um so in terms of benefits for our health in drinking deuterium depleted water Let's start with, you know, we know that our mitochondrial health has a lot to do with our overall metabolism and energy levels. So how about for weight loss? I mean, I just want the fast, the fast facts. I know that all our viewers are... Fast facts, you got yeah. them. <laughs> so well, for weight loss, think, is there any... Think yeah. about it. Think about it. Um, you have deuterium, which slows down biological processes. So if you have a hydrogen deuterium, uh, car, sorry, carbon deuterium bond, It'll it'll take nine times slower to disassociate than wow. a carbon hydrogen bond. Okay, so deuterium slows things down in nature, and the and the removal of it or the lack thereof speeds things up. So one thing people one thing people find when they d deplete the deuterium in their body, their metabolism speeds up. So if your metabolism speeds up, then you do have weight loss. You know, you're more efficient. You're much much more efficient. You're much you're better fire here, and then you're much more efficient at. Um, at uh, burning all the food that you consume and creating a you know, tran translation of calories into energy. 
Okay, now the beauty benefits of deuterium depleted water in terms of the aging process that you can visually see in terms of wrinkles and skin people health. say people say it affects the skin um, I, I think it does that's what that's what everybody tells me they say their skin gets it's gets younger more subtle and I do see that on people I mean like their their skin is amazing and then I found a Chinese yeah. study actually and this Chinese study uh, it, it quantifies that it shows that there is a when top topical application in this case most in, in this case people aren't putting it topically they're just drinking it um, right. so so the, again it's not about the water so much it's the process and the result of being deuterium depleted getting yourself to, getting your body at a lower deuterium level than what you already are and remember, keep in mind as we age everything puts more deuterium in our body so this is the only thing so if you so so maybe if, fasting you know red light therapy uh, yeah. things like the keto diet these things will will keep your deuterium depletion pathways working but eventually it, eventually it breaks down because it's cumulative so it's the right. only thing is by drinking the deuterium depleted water you get the real net energy benefit so anyway this chinese study they're putting it on topically and uh -huh. the people that have told me their skin improved we're putting we're just drinking it so topically they showed in, uh, they, there's there's pictures, you know, they showed a clear increase in the amount of collagen and elastin in wow. the sub layer of the skin. So that was that that just validated to me that this stuff is great for um, for for and, you know, what's great is being deuterium depleted, because when you have more you have, when you have more proton motor force, you have more youth. definition of youth. You know, it's like it's like if Absolutely. Youth, is, youth, if youth is wasted on the young and wisdom is wasted on the old, then, you know, you want to be like, right, you want to be right in the middle, right? Right. On yeah, that sweet spot. Yeah, exactly. Be in that, sweet spot. that takes that takes some, you know, we get we, we have all the tools when we come into this world, but we don't have the manual. So here we are trying uh -huh. to write the manual of, of how to live the most, you know, with the most health span possible and, you know, the most most enjoyment and most productivity possible so this is a this is a upstream solution this is an easy simple hack and when we talk about you know our modern diseases let's talk about cancer just for a moment i know that there's a lot of research looking at the benefits of depleting deuterium and drinking the water can you touch on this a little bit for cancer right yeah well there was a there was a doc there is a doctor actually there wasn't. He's still with us. Thank goodness, uh, Doctor Shamlai, and he's in uh, he's in Hungary, and uh, he's probably has the mo he's has the longest um, time spent with with uh, using um, water, deuterium depleted water, and deuterium depleted lifestyle with um, with cancer patients. So even 20 years ago, he wrote a book called Defeating Cancer. It's called Bucks. To buy it as a reference book, especially doctors, and therapists, because he lays out different protocols in there. But now, uh, you know, 2021, he's up to probably 3,300, 3,200 something case studies. Wow. So in those case studies, and they published earlier this year, actually, in a, in a peer-reviewed journal, and those what 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 that shows, and the conclusion is that when you're deuterium depleted, your survivor your your potential survivability increases to eight times. That was the average. Eight times. Wow. Eight times the average survivability of somebody that had some neoplastic condition. When they were when they were it's profound because you're giving your body the boost the energy that it needs to deal with stuff. You know, we're we're a self healing organism. We just need the information and the energy. Uh, I I'm a big I'm a big believer and proponent of fasting. I think fasting is a great way to get your body um, in, into a homeostatic balance very quickly. You know. Yes. Without without any of the without any without any of the noise, you know, you're getting all all signal, you know, because you're because what you're doing is you're is you're uh, going within. You know, when you go within, that's powerful. You, you you realize that not only do you live in a universe without, but you li literally live in a universe within. So when you get closer to that universe within, then, then all the answers are there. It makes a lot of sense. And then you look, and then you look without, and you go, oh, it, it's you're in nature. And then you could see that, you could see this, you could see that everything is everything is incredibly connected. So a holographic universe. So so we we find little clues, and these little clues we we we, ass we assemble into something that. It looks like a manual for our, you know, for our thrival. You know? Wow. Yeah. Well said. I was going to get to the mind, body, spirit connection at the end of the show, so we'll come back to that because that's I'm 
totally <laughs> that's you know who I am and what I what I practice and believe in so that I'm, I'm glad you went there already so that's fantastic um, can we talk a little bit about the process of I, we don't need to know any of your trade secrets but how I, I can't get it in straight in my head how is the deuterium depleted when you're actually manufacturing right. the water well I mean, you know, it's so it's so hard. I won't be giving away any trade secrets. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> but it, but I'll but I'll but I'll give I'll tell you, I'll give you specifics of actually how it's done because we, what how, the way it's done and what makes the water so rare right now. We don't have enough, and 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 what makes it expensive, and 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 what makes it not not many companies. I think like less than four four or less are actually know how to do this stuff, is because what we do is we we um, basically mimic recreate the hydrological cycle and amplify it and the way and the way that looks physically is you have a tall column you know a column that's like 30 to 40 feet tall and and this is inside the column you're recreating the hydrological cycle and uh it's called a vacuum assisted uh vacuum assisted rectification distillation and what you're doing is you're separating the heavies from the lights you know because wow. it's just like nature even even in nature uh the nature strategy in a plant it'll all the all the deuterium will be in the carbohydrates and the roots okay in the tubers and every and everything that's and everything lighter less in deuterium will be up in the canopy will be in the leaves okay so it's just like nature so we just we just we just amplify this hydrological cycle with some with some really clever um pretty genius engineering it's able to take out 97 percent Wow. and more if we keep running and we just you know run it like the earth it's a cycle right so we just amplify the cycle and we create it so we have like right now we have about 60 of these columns so amazing and and then you know we'll keep expanding as 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 uh people uh, uh understand understand that we'll, what we have here is a new is a new standard in, in water purity and, and I think, and I think yeah. people and people know this that live the, that live in these places. They 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 get the benefit without, they they know it inherently. They get the benefit without knowing it um, in their in their conscience. But you you'll see it when you go to these places. You're like, why is everybody so healthy and, and so active? And, and and even the old people like, well, it's because of the tap water there. And this is this is over decades of time. A small delta means so much for your for your long term. Right, and then through the mitochondrial, you know, evolution, um, and that the mom, it's only that you only get your mitochondria from your mother. So that passing right. down through the generations, you can see how, if it's if the if the source was good, then you know that's going to translate down in the generations. So it's it's very fascinating. This whole thing about mitochondrial health is it true that the mitochondria tells the the nuclear DNA what to do? Well, in a way. It, in a way, it does because it's running the energy. So back when nuclear, back when nuclear DNA ran the energy, it it, it, it was the boss. It told what to do. But uh, the thing is, you know, the mitochondria is, is an alien invader from somewhere else on this planet. You know, it came in and, and infected eukaryotic cells. Why? To create water. Right. As a secondary function, it created the ATP energy. And so eventually it overtook the energy um, production responsibility. It, con it got the contract for the cell's energy. Right? It manipulated its way in and says, hey, I'm going to make you water. While well, water is 1.45 billion years uh, ago, right? So the earth is very in a primordial state. What's important for the earth at that time? More water. Uh, so a bacteria comes in and says, hey, I make water. And I'm like, wow. And I make a little energy. But over time, it evolved to take over cells' energy production pathways. So now, is there a way that we can test our deuterium level? How does that work? And is it, you know, something that's indicated for somebody who maybe has cancer or is looking for that fountain of youth? Or um, we'll talk about how you use the deuterium depleted water in just a moment. But how is this tested for humans? Where do you live? You're in. We're you're in Canada. Toronto, Canada. In Toronto. So yeah, the water there is slightly lower than 150. It's probably like 148, 149. You're a little far north, a little removed from the from the from the oceans. So, yeah. so but so you're you can say okay, I'm gonna I'm, you're probably 149 now. But if you want to know for sure, then you do a baseline. And here's where baseline is important. 
let's say you know what your let's say you, you know what the liquids you consume are so you know you're going to be around the same so if you're let's say you want 149 so you come back at 149 like okay nothing, nothing you're we know you're you know where you're at but if you come if you come back lower if you're lower than you are that you're, that you're from now you know your body is very good at deuterium depletion on its own it's mm -hmm. able to it's able to um work properly okay now if yeah. you're above that if you're above 150 now you know why you may have some chronic conditions you know if you get up to like 155 57 which is like above ocean water you're like in a danger zone <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, you're like so and so you know and so you know and then and let's say you're you're like 155 but the water in your area is 150 you're like oh wow i'm higher that means you probably eat a lot of carbs honestly yeah because, because the terrarium is trapped in the carbs but it means you probably eat three or four meals a day of carbs non-stop non snacking of carbs so this so this so this so that, that that'll that'll verify that but what you want to look for is one to three months down the line three months is a better judge so three months down the line you do your test 90 days you've been depleting yourself over a 90 day period slow and sure and then you want to be somewhere in the 120s in the and 120s the first, you said yeah in the 120s okay. yeah okay. yeah the first yeah. biological all the studies from the 50s beyond show that the biological benefit starts at 133 ppm so and, and that's that's I don't think that's entirely true because people that live in areas where they have you know 136 139 compared to people that live places where their water is 150 like I said before just that small little delta over many years is going to is going to have a significant impact on your on your energy and your mitochondria so so I mean you're just you know in places where you have less deuterium naturally you're 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 working with you've got better fuel you know right you, you put you choose good you choose good gasoline for your car you know it's just a, it's just and you do this constantly it's over and you got to how many fill-ups you got to do once a week you know so twice a week it's over and over and over and over so you're doing this to yourself and what you're doing is you're 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 um you want to keep the integrity of your mitochondria and that's why you and that's why you deplete and would this change seasonally? So for someone like myself in a temperate region with the cold, how does the cold affect the, our deuterium cycles and our mitochondria? Well, I, I, I know that, how it affects the mitochondria. I know this is a big question, but. <laughs> you know, that I, I, that's a great question. I don't, I don't really know that entirely yet, but what I do know, and this is, this is, really, this is really profound. If you, if you study, if you look at, not even study, just observe, migration of animals, birds in this case, right? They go from Northern Canada, you know, in the summertime, yeah. and then they fly down, hang out in Florida and the Caribbean. Why are they doing this? Why, this? why this long migration back and forth? It's a strategy to give birth in a place where there's less deuterium. Uh -huh. That's that why the whales, do, yeah. the whales do it, the whales do it too. Whales do the same exact thing because they hang out and either in the South Pole where you have the lowest deuterium on the planet, 89 ppm, or they hang out in Alaska where it's slightly lower in the 120s, and they drink glacial meltwater, right? And then they yeah. go, and then they swim to warm waters, humpback whales to Hawaii, and then they fast for three to six months. They don't eat a thing. They give birth, and they go back and drink that drink that runoff, which is which is deuterium depleted. And they're the longest, biggest, longest living and biggest mammals on the planet. But for birds, birds is so interesting because because um, they're they're um, they're cold-blooded, right? Yeah. Like reptiles. So they're going somewhere where they're, 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 that's, that migration ultimately is a deuterium depletion strategy. Because, this, because the multi-generational studies show that, that you have more young, they're healthier, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're generationally have less deuterium, the mother has less deuterium. So, they're, so that's why they go and give birth and lay their eggs up there. And, wow. uh, and, you know, and, and other and mammals do it as well. There's the massive migration patterns. These and 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 of course they don't know this, you know, con, uh, you know, consciously, but intuitively this is why it's this is why they do this. And this, okay, for me, I'm thinking about all of our. I'm going in a completely different direction, but it's connected with our EMF exposure and our light cycles with blue light toxicity. I mean, we're, as humans, we're completely disconnected from oh, yeah. nature. Yeah. So this is part of that whole deuterium cycle as well, right? That people are just so messed up, and then they wonder why they get cancer, or they're getting fat, you know, eating the carbs. Well, I think that, I think I, <laughs> yeah, no, you know, there is a, there is a connection there because uh, I haven't proven this yet, but as somebody told me, they, they, 
their little aura ring showed them that when they started uh, uh, depleting deuterium, their deep sleep cycle doubled. Wow. I, I, I haven't confirmed this at all for myself, but, but that's really profound. So I think a lot of this has to do with deep sleep. And when you increase the amount of blue light, you know, not only do you decrease the amount of, let's call it sleep that in which you repair, it's the only sleep in which you repair anything, right? You go phase conjugate and you actually start the deep repair process. And if you don't have that sleep, then you won't repair. And, and, and when we are exposed to blue light, it messes up our circadian rhythm, a bunch of other things. And so we're, we become deficient in, in, we become deficient in this. And so, um, this is a big problem, major problem. And we, Absolutely. we are, are, yeah, I mean, our, we have an endocannabinoid system as well that totally gets screwed up because of this blue light problem. So red light all the way, blue light, you know, keep it to a minimum where we have too much of it. So, uh, and the, and it shows the red light actually increases, um, increases the spin of the nanomotors and increases the health of the mitochondria. So red light is good. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's yeah, nature. Good. Uh, another question. Okay. So let's say, you know, tomorrow I want to start my protocol. I've had my test done for my deuterium level. So are you saying that you test the water that you are drinking and your own deuterium in your saliva? You could, to start you could as a baseline? Uh, you could. The water that you drink, that's uh, that's public data if you could find it. Um, eventually figure out how to publish all that. But, you know, that, that exists. So you should know what your local water is. Um, it's good to know. You can, but that's that's available. And you can you can pretty much, if, if you're in most parts of North America, you pretty much know it's between um, 140 and 150. So, and then from the, okay. yeah. So you could do a baseline or not. Yeah. But the key is that afterwards that you have, that you know that your strategy for depletion is working that you are in the 120s because you're going to want to stay there. When you stay there, you get the, the biological benefit becomes cumulative. It's, it's the, it really is like a fountain of youth. It's the, it's the modern fountain of youth. It's the closest thing that we found because it's the only thing, like I said before, that gives you a net energy benefit. There's, you know, food gives you a temporary net energy benefit, but then it's a caloric benefit. But then, but then what does it introduce into the system? More deuterium. Right. So they all, you know, everything, everything we ingest not only gives us an immediate caloric benefit to produce ATP, but it introduces deuterium into the system. So we want to, this is the, this is the, this is the, uh, this is, this is the secret sauce here. Just reduce deuterium. And I've seen it in people. I've seen the, it works phenomenal on, uh, on every age, but in older people, you really see it more because, because they've had more time of accumulating this stuff. Right. So as we, age, we age, we've got more of it. And, and the reason Dr. Ogun even thought of asking that question of like, of, of what is, of, of what is going on in the electron transport chain in the ATP synthase nanomotor was because he looked at blood plasma and he saw that because you think, oh, deuterium, it's not a big deal. Like I said before, it's like six drops in a, in a liter of water. That's nothing, right? But mm. then he looked at the blood plasma and he saw there was four to five magnesium I mean, things we need for basic life functions. And he saw wow. there's four times more of this stuff. So it's like, wow, it's everywhere. Okay, just like hydrogen is everywhere. It's everywhere. And in the same proportion as hydrogen. But as we evolved, we had some, we had slightly less. And, and we like it a little, we like it slightly reduced from where we are now. And uh, you don't, it doesn't need to be very much, but the, but the biological benefit is, is quite astonishing. And is, is there sort of a, um, a percentage depletion that where you would say, okay, across the board, everybody's going to feel or experience something in terms of a health benefit, in terms of, you know, the percentage that yeah, they've depleted? Yeah, that, get down into that 120, get down into that 120 range. Okay. Now, if, now, your doctor may want you to go lower, you know, for, for if you're dealing with stuff, but, you know, that should be, that should be between you and your healthcare practitioner. Um, you know, the lowest on the planet is, like I said, is 89 ppm. So that's that's nature. You can go down at 89, no problem. You can get into the 80s. I got into the 80s. You know, it's hard to maintain because you have to be very strict, and it does give you um, quite a quite a lot of energy. But uh, but that first jump, that first jump from 150 to 120, is yeah. more profound than is more profound than 120 and going lower. And certainly athletes, they were, they're going to, you know, hardcore biohackers, they're trying, they're going to try to get as low as possible. But what I, what I caution is that 
with more energy comes more um, responsibility. <laughs> you have to be yeah. you have to be you have to be grounded. You have to yeah. be quite yeah. grounded to balance that energy. And so um, get to the point where you you're like those people in the mountains, you know, that can slug it all day and and dance all night in any yeah. age. That's where we want to be, and that's in the 120 range. And I'm sure, you know, in terms of protocols, how to do that. I mean, once you start drinking the deuterium depleted water, um, do you need to always drink it to stay where we're in that 120 range? Yeah, you want to maintain it. It should be a lifestyle yeah. change. However, when you look at the studies, again, it shows that even one week out of four weeks, one week a month has has a clear biological benefit. Okay, that makes sense. Because not, I mean, we know because of the expense, not everybody's going to be able to <laughs> jump right in yeah. for the rest of their life. That may be a deterrent yeah. at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you, but again, you can, you can do, if it's, if it's a financial deterrent, you can, if you dilute it, if you dilute something um, five times, you get 130. I mean, that, right. that right there, I mean, like, I've seen, I've seen people have a experience on a difference of 5 ppm, a delta of 5 ppm. I can't explain it, but I've seen it. So even a, I've seen for myself that even a small delta, which is a difference of of of, um, of percentage of deuterium that you have, is a bit. I mean, some yeah. people consider you go your whole life, and today you have more deuterium in your body than you had yesterday. Assuming you're not right. fasting, you're doing you know doing these things that are keeping us in a state of youth, you know. And then one day comes along, and you and you're able to deplete a little bit. Some people don't feel anything. Some people that are very subtly attuned, they go, wow, what's this? Uh -huh. It's very, it's very interesting. It's very interesting because this is, this is, you know, this is in our, this relationship with deuterium, it's embedded in our genetic code. Right. And is there a caution to deplete too quickly? Like, will people get detox types of reactions? I can only imagine if they're all of a sudden. I've seen like, people. Whoa. I've seen people go for it, you know, and I've never seen anything. Even when people went for it, like like hardcore, um, yeah. which I don't, which I don't recommend because everything should be like gradual, you know. Of course. But, uh, yeah. but even when they went for it hardcore, they uh, had the at most they had a headache. Now, as far as detox goes. Like a person can have their methylation pathways all all blocked up, you know, and then and then a little bit of energy introduction in the system, okay, a little bit more energy and everything opens up. It's like when you take an antihistamine, you know, and you're clogged up and go, mm -hmm. I can breathe all of a sudden. Yeah. So in that in that respect, yeah, you might have some kind of cleansing reaction. You'd be very lucky if you do because you know if that's all it takes, you're right there and you know, <laughs> ready for. Ready. All you needed was a little boost, you know. Yeah, Just a amazing. Little, the the athletes are you know getting such a benefit from using the deuterium depleted water for oxygenation and being able to recover faster i'm guessing as well the studies that i that i found in russia um two studies they were done on um they were done on a small small number of people i think six there were six people in each study six people drank deuterium depleted water as much as they wanted for 30 days Six people drank a limited amount. They were rationed, and six people didn't do didn't didn't do. Uh, they were just drinking regular water, and uh, in both studies, now one study was on regular people exercising for thirty days, and one study was on uh, athletes exercising for their thirty days, and they found that after thirty days, that they needed half the amount of oxygen to perform the same amount of physical work. So wow. I want to recreate this study here in the U.S. because that blew me away. That's crazy, crazy. So if that's real, if that's real, and I and I think it is because I feel it. You know, I I, I and other people, other people that are, I like to exercise. Uh, I'm not a professional athlete, but I like to run and do other exercises. So I've no, I've noticed it in myself. So wow. I think it, I think there's, I think there's really, really something to it. And so when I look, when I read this study, and I thought, well, where is this? Where can I see some other evidence of this, you know, in nature or in humans? And I found it. I like the people that climb uh, high elevations, alpine climbers, high altitude climbers that climb, let's say, Himala Himalayas or Himalayas. You, when you're up there, uh, there's less oxygen at 28,000 feet, so most most people have to have to have supplemental oxygen. But these Sherpas don't. The Sherpas they can go up and down all day like they're at a shopping mall, and uh, they don't. They don't need any oxygen. Why is that? Because the water that they're drinking at base camp, their entire lives, 100, I think it's 29, don't quote me on that, but it's 129 ppm of deuterium. 
And so some Westerners have been able to climb Mount Everest without supplemental oxygen, acclimated at base camp. Now, without, without even realizing it themselves, the longer you stay at base camp, the longer you're depleting your deuterium level because you uh -huh. come flying out of the U.S., you know, and you go to Himalayas, you're probably at, you know, 140 to 150 in your deuterium, and then you hang out there for, for two, three weeks a month or longer, and now you drop down to what the what the water is there. Now you have now you have more proton motor force, which means you utilize oxygen better, which like the study I cited shows. And so these people were able to ascend um, to the summit without supplemental oxygen. But the Sherpas do it all day long. And they do it because they live in an environment where they have less deuterium. So it makes sense yeah. that oxygen deuterium connection. And it makes sense yeah. and it makes sense when you look at it uh, physiologically and biochemistry as well. Amazing. Yeah, I remember reading a little bit about the Sherpas and the deuterium, but now it makes complete sense um, in it, terms of... It's really, yeah. it really, I mean, uh, there's another, there's another uh, thing I looked at in nature. I looked at camels, okay? And camels, yes, they, live yeah. twice, they live twice as long as horses, okay? Twice the lifespan, but they're very similar. And why do they do that? Well, because they're, they have a keto strategy. They're making all their water from the fat in their humps. So they're, they're full keto. So, uh, and they go for what, 30 days or somewhere around there without water because they're digesting the fat. And that's what happens when you fast as well, is you burn your own fat. So the reason fasting is so important, I advocate it, because it is a deuterium depletion strategy. What makes it a deuterium depletion strategy is because your fat is deuterium depleted. When you burn fat, when you burn a kilo of fat, which is what happens when you're fasting, you'll produce a liter of deuterium depleted water in your body. So. That's, wow. that's the same thing. Same thing happens when you're more ketogenic as well. You're, you're, you're running off, of, you're, 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 you're running off of something that has less deuterium. So fascinating. I mean, that's for me personally, just connecting so many dots that nobody, you know, not a lot of people know, let's be honest, unless, you know, more people are learning about deuterium. And that's the reason why we're doing this show is to get, you right. know, more people aware of this whole thing about deuterium. And um, it's so interesting how it, yeah, I mean, if you look at through the lens of deuterium and deuter deuterium depletion, it just, it kind of, it just makes it makes sense. It's it's all about nature and you know really why is. why we can either thrive or just barely survive based on even our modern conveniences. We can really you know hack some of these things to really help our overall health and our longevity. Yeah, and why? And, yeah. and why young and why young people can wing it? Yes, exactly. <laughs> right? Exactly. Why you can yeah. wing it in your youth because you have yeah. more mitochondria, you have more energy. It's just given to you. And right. Then, and then. Try to save it and preserve it and maybe create you know create some more mitochondria as you age which is mitogenesis which is a fantastic topic you know the ability wow. to actually create more mitochondria and that's done and that's done through that's done through exercise you know through being in a through being in a through being in a loving state because you're in a parasympathetic state so it's being in a, it's in a healing and nurturing state not this fight or flight state so um which is yeah. a perfect segue into my next, you know, train of thought and questioning in terms of the benefits of deuterium depleted water and creating that connection, you know, spiritually, energetically with the earth. How can you enlighten us on this subject? <laughs> That's a good question. It's a, a, it's a, it's a deep, it's a deep question. And, and, uh, I think is really, um, what I would like to put out there is that is that people um, maybe in the future can figure out new uh, new technologies for, for doing something like this because this is something that is like we're standing on the shoulders of giants here, so uh, every generation hopefully we learn something you know it's something that was given to us uh, a question that was started a generation or more before so here we so here we are and um, and the more and you know the more we realize it most of our stuff comes from biomimicry, you know, it comes from trying to observe and copy nature. Okay. And so, and so sometimes we get ahead of that and then we have to, and then we have to reel that back in. So maybe using some unknown process that we don't yet know, somebody will figure out a way that everybody could have this in their home. Cause right now mm -hmm. you can't, you know, it's on a big yeah. industrial scale, you know, we're going to have to build big factories to, to create this, um, create this water to reduce this contaminant, just like in the beginning when you had when you had you have these big desalination plants, you have you have giant reverse osmosis technology plants. You know we we we've in the 20th century we figured out that we have to 
that we have to treat and further process our water. And in the 21st century, we're figuring out this deuterium problem. We're figuring out the water is actually a living being, you know, and we have to treat it with respect. We're figuring out we can affect water with our with our thoughts. You know, there's yeah. so many new things we're understanding. And these things have always been there if we observe nature. So um, we just have to slow down a little, I think. That's the that's the message and just and just look around and ask the right questions. And and can we or do you have case studies or in your own experience, you know, improve our connection, um, our ability to meditate? Do these things get easier when you start to deplete your deuterium? Do you think that our inherent connection with nature, with the higher power, whatever people believe in or not, um, can be enhanced that we can, you know, enhance our health and I'm going beyond the physical here and in other in other ways and the deuterium depletion helps to do that process absolutely well, I just I kind of contradicted myself right I said we need to slow down which is true now when you deplete deuterium that speeds things up so what you what you what we really want to do and that that speeding up is really not speeding up it's optimizing right right so when everything is optimized then we can slow down the brain we can slow down the mind. It's just the mind just plays tricks on us all the time. It wants to keep us past or in the future. It's always so it's like that. So we have to put it, we have to put ourselves in the present. So we put ourselves in the present either through pleasure or pain. That's one way, right? Mm -hmm. Well, pain will do it. You know, if you got you get injured, you can't think about nothing else. Like <laughs> that mm. hurts. <laughs> okay. Right. But same yeah. thing. But same thing when we're feeling good. Same thing when we're feeling good. We we can't help but to experience the present moment when we're feeling good, you know, it's only that the tension comes from thinking about the past or the future. So that I, I think that right there is, is, is a key. So just uh, don't let your mind play tricks on you. But when we have less stress and with deuterium depletion, it, the studies do show that it reduces stress. Okay? Even even the even the poor mice that were induced into all kinds of stressful situations show that, that deuterium depletion increases your ability to withstand, to withstand stress. So People have been become so disconnected from who they are, why they're here. We're just, you know, these robots that, you know, aren't, aren't connected. People I find that are more into natural health and healing, you know, uh, most of my, my viewers, they, they're looking for something. They're looking for, okay, what is it? What, uh, or I'm gaining weight, or I've got the headaches, or whatever it is, or I have cancer, whatever it is, that um, people are looking for those little tidbits, and that's why we share the information that we do uh, in, in these shows to, to give the tidbits, so then you've got to take it from there. And I, I think that's a great place for us to, you know, Say thank you so much, Victor. I mean, it was a fabulous, fabulous amount thank of so information. One, uh, yeah, please. One little ahead. tidbit came to me when I was when I was young, and it was a bumper sticker, and it said, "If you're seeking enlightenment, lighten up." Ah. <laughs> That's awesome. And it's so true. It's so true. I mean, so simple, but so true at the same time. Really appreciate your time with us here today. It was fantastic. Thank it you. was so great to learn so much from you and, you know, continued success in your world and, you know, health. I, I thank you so much. Thank you for having me on your show. So that was a great show. I hope that you learned a lot. We talked all about the benefits of deuterium depleted water and how deuterium really does affect our overall health, our aging processes, and even things like serious diseases like cancer. If you do have questions or comments, please do put them below in that comment section. Also share this video with someone that you know who needs to hear this information. I truly appreciate a big thumbs up on this video and if you're new to my channel, welcome in. I hope that you'll subscribe and click that bell to turn on all notifications so you'll always be notified of my newest and latest uploads, which happens every single day of the week. And remember to always take good care of your health and do it naturally. Thanks for watching.